Hey, what's up guys? GT Gamer here and welcome to my brand new game. And as always, I'm bringing you this game late with a terrible review because that's what I do. Uh, Self-burn, they hurt the most because you've already accepted that they're true. But either way, today we're flying from Auckland on New Zealand's North Island to the capital, I believe it's the capital, Christchurch on the South Island in this awesome Airbus, uh, in New Zealand, Airbus A320 Neo. Uh, so I'm going to pop into the cockpit. I'll try and talk you out through a bit of how to fly this plane. Uh, first I'm going to release the parking brake. We are going to be flying mostly on autopilot and we're going to land using the ILS system because it's really good. Um, and we're going to see some absolutely spectacular scenery along the way. So let's pop the throttle forward a little bit. I think that's a bit too, yeah, that's a little bit too much. I'm flying using an Xbox uh, One controller, a wired Xbox One controller, but honestly I'll talk a bit more about this in a bit. This game is mind-blowing. Like it's so easy to use, it really really is. Right, so I need to line up here on runway 23 left, 23 left, and today our call sign is New Zealand uh, 1683. So uh, let's line up, okay, maybe a bit more throttle than this, just to get us lined up. There you go. Got to get a bit of speed in there, and I'm using the left and right triggers to turn. Uh, they also control the rudder. Right. What do we reckon there? Is that lined up? Right, fuck it, let's go for it. Uh, no, let's not go for it, actually. Just going to stop here, because I haven't set my plane up correctly. Right, so, I'm going to zoom the map out here to, yeah, 20 miles will do for now. And I'm going to set the air sp the altitude. I don't know what we're flying at, but I'm going to set it now to about 10,000. As soon as we take off, I will engage the autopilot and it'll tell us how high to go. 29.92 uh, is our barometric pressure, that's correct. Parking brake is off, throttles are all good. Right checklist is already complete. All I have to do now is take off. Right, let's go. Um, V1 speed, I'm going to aim to pull back about 140 knots, give or take. That should give us plenty of airspeed to climb out of Auckland. Right, 90, 100, 120, Coming up on 130, I'm going to start pulling back. There we go. I should have given us more flaps. I'm going to increase the flaps now. Just to give us a bit more lift. And gear up. Start putting the flaps away. Bit less flaps there. And flaps in. Right, I'm going to engage the autopilot. Look at that though, that is an amazing, it's so amazing this game. Here's a one to one scale of the entire planet, it's also very loud. <laughs> right, 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet, and oh, engage that. Right, I'm going to reduce the throttle a little bit now to there, just to allow the auto throttle to take over the speed of the plane. Right, 7,900 feet. What's our altitude we got to fly to? <laughs> I really should have been listening. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Oh, did it not give us an altitude? Right, okay. Netherland. <laughs> 12,000 feet, right. We can Climb do that. Maintain 12,000 feet, New Zealand, 1683. New Zealand. I like that. But yeah, this, the scenery in this game is absolutely stunning, and there is something about halfway along this route that I want to show you that is absolutely amazing. Um, this is the first video I'm making on my new graphics card. I got a MSI 2080 Super, uh, X Game Cocooning Trio, something like that brand new graphics card I upgraded from the 1080 Ti that I had because uh, that one was slightly damaged from thermal issues where I tried to overclock it before still worked fine but every now and again it'd be a bit spazzy so 
had to run it underclocked, and I <laughs> honestly I just wanted an upgrade. Oh, the scenery is amazing in this game. Um, I have turned my frame rate counter on, it's in the top right corner, I don't know if you can see that, it's not very clear at the moment. Um, but on my system, which is an i7 7700K overclock to 4.5, and a 2080 Super with 32 gigs of 3000 uh, megahertz RAM, 3600 megahertz RAM, sorry, uh, it runs really, really well. You do occasionally have lag spikes, but in general, it's really uh, quite stable. Right, is it going to take us along the coast, or are we going to fly out over the water? I think we're going to fly out over the water for a little bit. I have set the presets to clear sky, uh, just because I wanted to enjoy the scenery quite a lot. It really is something special. They've made a one-to-one -one map, scale map, of the world, which is just... It's insane. I found my house the other day. A lot of people have been wondering if you can do that. You can. Ooh, got to climb. What was it? 260, I think it said. Yeah. 26,000. There it goes. Pop that in there. But yeah, you can totally find your house. Um, it won't look exactly like it does in real life, but it will be there as a model, more than likely. Um, the way it works is all the houses are auto-generated off Bing Maps data. So, it gets the satellite, it sees a house, and it auto-generates it. And it really is amazing. If you do buy this game, and you're not an experienced pilot, I highly recommend starting off um, on the Airbus A320neo. Very easy to fly, very easy to work out the autopilot. And the ILS system in it is really good. Um, I would recommend flying either as a low or a high altitude airline airways and set the presets so there's a ILS runway. That will make it so much easier for you. 26, I think that's a little bit high. I'm not sure if I like flying that high. I might, once we climb, um, request a lower altitude. Let's see how high it takes us because I forgot to check what our altitude's going to be. I don't want it to be like 39,000 feet though. Or 38,000. I got a feeling that's what I was going to give us. This is a livery pack. I can't remember who it's by. Um, I will try and link it below if I can. Uh, but finding it might be difficult. But yeah, it's just a free livery pack for the A320 that I download offline. And I gotta say, Air New Zealand top-notch paint job guys seriously check that out that is such a good library interesting the reason it's uh, most planes are white whereas this one's black is because of reflectivity white paint reflects the light better because when you're flying really high you're exposed to a lot of ultraviolet light um, white paint reflects that light black paint absorbs it which is bad for the airframe just a cool little bit of trivia for you. I'm not saying it's unsafe to fly in New Zealand, but that's why most airplanes are white, except the tail, because no one's ever in the tail, so it can't damage you with the UV light. Okay, I'm just having a look at the VFR map, the flight plan essentially. Uh, the plan is to fly along the coast of New Zealand, then we're going to hop over this bit of the island here. That's where there's a feature that is insanely cool that I want to show you. Uh, it's called Mount Taranaki, it's a volcano, but it has a really insanely special feature. And then we're flying over this uh, bay or channel, however you describe it, from uh, the New Zealand North Island to the South Island. We'd be flying across the mountains. There is some absolutely amazing scenery as we descend towards uh, the airport. We get right up to the coast and then it turns us for final approach and that's when we intercept the ILS for landing. It is genuinely a really cool flight path this is. I just, I should have selected the altitude a bit better, I didn't think about it. So what I might do, how high are we now? We're flying at 26,000, 24,000. Let's see, let's see what we can do about the altitude. Let's see if we can, let's, let's request lower by 10,000. New Zealand center, New Zealand 1683. Request flight level 290. Right, so yeah, it was giving us 39,000 feet. 
Okay, let's see. Okay, let's acknowledge that. Climb and maintain flight level 260. Expect flight level 290 as a land 1683. Awesome. I wish there was a way to, to, like, a menu to say, request this altitude. Like, just, like, change altitude, you click it. Oh. As a land 1683, climb and maintain flight level 290. Right, let's see. They'll acknowledge that automatically for us. Flight level right, request you. Um, let's lower it by another 10,000. Let's, I think, 19,000 feet. New Zealand, one, six, eight, three. Request flight level 190. My target is 16,000. Right, let's see if I can get 16,000. I like 16,000, that's what I flew when I did this route last time. Yeah, this is a bit long-winded. Right, another 3,000 feet. Let's see if we can get 16,000 feet. Request 16,000 feet. Right, it's giving us 19,000, but it will give us 16,000. Very nice. That's really good. So I've set the traffic to quite a lot of um, traffic, like as in vehicles on the road and rivers and boats in the sea. And I've set the air traffic to real life. I think I can see that mountain ahead of us now. It is spectacular though. Let's see if I can make it a little bit clearer outside, shall I? Uh, clear skies, temperature, yeah, I'm not going to play with any of that, but we are on the clear skies preset, live weather, how's that looking? If the live weather's okay, I might just stick with that, nah, that's way too cloudy for my liking. If you want a challenge, I highly recommend the snow preset, uh, take the depth all the way up, and ILS landing, <laughs> you will not be able to see where you're going until you're over the top of the runway and your plane will get covered in vice, so it's really cool. Right, we've just been approved to 16,000. I have turned the um, volume down a little bit just to make it more manageable for my ears. Uh, it was pretty loud. And now we're going to 16,000. All you do to decrease the altitude, rotate this little knob here to select it. There's a little button behind you can click to change the increments to 100s or 1000s to switch between them. And then you just press a little up arrow and it'll uh, manage altitude automatically. Uh, although for some reason it's given us 1,800 feet. No, 18,500 feet, sorry. Not too sure why it's doing that. So I'm just going to press down. That'll aut override the management and it'll go to the altitude I've selected. Right, let's see how far it is to the airport. It's about 400 miles this flight. It is a really nice flight though. Yeah, so just at the top of the display, about 320, 330 miles away. That is the airport we're landing at. And I'm gonna change that back to, I like it around the, I choose generally between the 40 and the 80 preset when I'm in flight. And then as I come into land, I generally go closer with the map to 10, 20 miles. As far as I know, this is a realistic flight plan. This is the real flight plan that they, uh, in New Zealand used to fly from Auckland to Christchurch along the coast and then over Mount Taranaki and then they go to the South Island over the mountains and as I said the approach is stunning and I have actually spoken to someone who's flown this flight in real life and apparently it is amazing scenery out the window and I've got to give credit to the to Microsoft and Sobo who developed this game it is unlike anything I've ever played before. The thing that blew my mind most about this game, let's go up in the windscreen view, shall we? Yeah, I like that. Is I have X Plane 11, I've used X Plane 10, I have the old Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you generally have a balance. You either have ultra realistic, like X Plane 11, but it's so hard to use, it really is. There's so many menus, and there's you have to set up custom presets for buttons. It's just really hard to use. And then on the flip side, you have the less realistic versions, where it's like very simple to use, but the experience is just not fun. 
Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is absolutely insane. It's so easy to use. And that's not to say that it's unrealistic. You can make it as hard or as fun or as realistic as you want. The customizability and the user interface is just something special. And as I said, the fact that they've managed to put the entire planet, the entire planet at a one-to-one -one scale in a video game, is it's groundbreaking. It's never been done before, and it is ultra cool. It is like the most insane thing going. I genuinely have been blown away by this game. I love it. I do like the A320 as well, that's my favourite plane, that's why I chose to fly this one. I don't have the 787, unfortunately, because I bought the Standard Edition, not the Premium Deluxe. And rather annoyingly, and Steam developers, if you're listening, this needs to be a feature. I want to upgrade to the Premium Deluxe version, but because I've sunk like 100 hours into this game, I can't get a refund on it to get the Deluxe Edition without just buying the Deluxe Edition. And I went to do that, I was prepared to fork out that extra money, and it would not let me rebuy it because I already have it in my basket, even though it's a different version. Like, Steam, really? You need to fix that because you're losing out money, literally. I was going to pay extra money to have the Deluxe Edition and upgrade, but they just would not let me. I even wrote to the Steam developers using their help system and the response I got was, yeah, sorry, maybe try reaching out to the game developer. And it's like, really? That's not, that's just not good enough, guys. So yeah, at the moment I'm stuck with the, uh, the standard edition until I can fix that. I don't know, maybe I'll just buy the deluxe edition off Microsoft. That's a shame, it really is a shame because I was looking forward to upgrading. The only thing I have noticed about this plane, and I'm bringing it now because I can bring it up now because I can hear it. There is an unusual engine whine, which sounds like it's changing in pitch very rapidly. Um, I'm not sure if that is realistic or if that's a bug that no one's noticed, but it does get a bit annoying. New Zealand is a stunning place. Sorry, I'm just, I'm taken back to enjoy the serene scenery. It is so beautiful from the sky. I'm sure it's beautiful from the ground as well, but... From flying over it, I mean, I'd love to go there, but I haven't. From flying over it, it's amazing. And here is that mountain I was on about. What's so special about this mountain? That's the question. Why am I so special? Because it has a very important message to tell. Which sounds weird, and it sounds like I'm rambling, which I probably am. But something amazing about this mountain. So this is an active volcano. It's a stratovolcano, which means, essentially, it could erupt at any moment. And the New Zealand government know this, so what they've done is they've set up an exclusion zone around it. I believe it's about five or six miles radius, this exclusion zone. But essentially, no one can go in there, no one can build stuff or develop the land. You just gotta leave it. And as a result, <laughs> it shows how much humans have changed the planet. Because this exclusion zone is clearly visible from space. It's, it's a circle all the way around this mountain of trees. And then where the humans have come, and destroyed the land, you can clearly see where the edge of that exclusion zone is. And I just really want to show you that, because it is very deep, because it's like, humans come along to arguably one of, if not the most beautiful countries on Earth, and they just change the landscape forever. This is a rare example of just letting nature do what nature does. And I just think that's really cool. All right, we're coming up on it now. We're probably still about 40 miles away, mind. The sky's so clear and we're so high up that, yeah, we're probably quite far still. Nice little tank down there. I believe that's Plymouth? Don't quote me on this, but I believe that is the town of Plymouth. Well, that might be Plymouth down there. It's one of them. Yeah, now we're transitioning from flying along the coast to just cutting over the corner of the North Island of New Zealand. 
Let me know in the comments, guys. Would you ever go to New Zealand? I want him. I'll be honest. I'd love to go to New Zealand. Even from here, from... I don't know how far that is. I'm guessing... Probably 30 miles. Yeah, there's Plymouth. New Plymouth. You can still clearly see the exclusion zone. It is mind-blowing. Plymouth Airport. I might try and do a flight to or from there at some point. That looks pretty cool. Oh, we're turning. We're turning to get closer to the mountain. Hopefully we don't just crash into it now. So, one of these areas is New Plymouth. I would say it's that one, because that's closer to the airport, but it could be the larger one there. In fact, I'm more inclined to say it's the larger area of development down there. I don't know. I don't know New Zealand's geography that well. Airspeed of a... That's one thing that's annoying about this game. I'm sure I can turn them off, but they do keep popping up those little warnings. At the end of the day, it's the autopilot flying, not me. This is so stunning. There's another rather large mountain over there that you can see with a bit of snow on the top. What do you reckon for the thumbnail, guys, that? Maybe get a thumbnail after I pass the mountain so you get the front of the plane in. That could be a pretty good idea. Yeah, excluding that little bit of a ridge there, you can see, you can clearly see the exclusion zone. Look at that! I just think that's amazing. A circle visible from space. With this amazing looking mountain at the middle. It's so symmetrical as well. It's just that little ridge there that destroys the symmetry of it. Well guys, this is Mount Taranaki. It's a very interesting name that is. We're about to pass into the exclusion zone. Look at the detail though, you can see every single tree. But I know it's just a Google Maps or Bing Maps layer popped over the top of a terrain uh, map, terrain level map, I don't know. But it looks so real. That looks amazing. I don't know what that is down there, a little patch of white. I'm not above 230... Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> um, oh, oh, well, screw it. You can see my, my shadow on the mountain. Oh, that's cool. You can see my little itty-bitty shadow down there. As it disappears off the edge of a cliff. Wow. Just wow. Check that out. I need to visit Everest at some point. How tall is Everest? 29,000 feet. So if I fly at 30,000, just over the top of it, just all the people spending like 10 grand climbing it and see me, <laughs> that'd be funny. In a Cessna. So yeah, you could have climbed Everest, or you could have spent that money on a plane and just flown over it. It is so expensive to fly it, to climb Everest. <laughs> It's like, you could spend up to like 200 grand to climb Everest, so why would you spend that money to climb a mountain? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, it's on your bucket list, but... Really? Really? Like, I know you can climb it for as cheap as 20 or 30 grand, but... Count me out. Check that out. For a thumbnail. Maybe... Maybe that. Bit of a lag spike there.
That's so cool. I love the way as well it's flat. It's not like it's a, mount, a volcano in a mountain range. The land is relatively flat here. It's like a bit of a uh, valley. A plateau. And then you just have that in the middle of it. How tall is that mountain? That's what I want to know now. Let's get my trusty little phone out here. Mount Taran. How high is it? 2,500 meters. Damn. Right, well, we're going out over the ocean, guys. You can just see in the distance there the, uh, the little bumps of the South Island. So I think I'm going to cut this out, get some nice beautiful shots going, and then I'll bring you back a bit later. Okay guys, we're approaching the South Island of New Zealand now, so because the South Island is very hilly, as you can see, even though the hills are quite short, I find that it creates a lot of turbulent air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to request to increase my altitude by 6,000 feet, because I find that 22,000 is quite a good altitude uh, to avoid turbulence, but it's also low enough to get a good view. I love that. News alert. There we go. Climb Pop and maintain in. flight level 220 New Zealand 1683. And for those wondering, yes, the autopilot will land you. Um, but you might want to take over manual control right at the end just to smooth the landing out. Otherwise, you might bounce and enter alpha floor mode, which is probably something I should mention. Um, so, alpha floor mode or A floor is a safety system built into Airbus. Uh, airplanes and it's essentially there to stop you from stalling so as you go to land don't pull back too far because if the plane thinks you might be about to stall or your angle of attack becomes too great you will enter alpha floor mode the way you can tell is it will say a floor by here it'll be a dot floor and if that happens, it will go full throttle and it'll try and increase your height. Which, during touchdown, is a pain in the ass. Because honestly, you have to go around. Um, I did enter alpha floor mode before and thought, eh, let's see if I can land it anyway. So I, th I fought against the autopilot. It's not great. I mean, I did get down. Uh, I stopped for the end of the runway, but only just. And I'm pretty sure a lot of refund requests went into um, Spirit, I believe I was flying at that time. The airline Spirit. So yeah, just be careful of uh, Alpha Floor Mode. I'm going to use the autopilot to land, Like I'll leave it on as long as I can. A, because it actually does help quite a lot. And B, to show you how it's done basically. It's kind of a tutorial this video, but mainly I just want to show off the amazing graphics. Um, let's see what we can do weather-wise. Let's see what all the weather presets look like. Uh, firstly, let's go night time. So I'm going to go live because I'm in the UK. So it's night in New Zealand at the moment. That's why it looks like at night. It's actually easier flying at night because the lights help out quite a lot. You can see like runways from really far away. And the glide slope, the PAPI, the precision approach path indicator which basically are a set of lights that tell you how high up you are compared to how far away from the airport you are. It's basically, it's like a visual representation of the glide slope you should be following. So that's night mode. I'm going to go back to about 12 o'clock, but I like that time. So I'm just 
just drag that across to uh, I took off at 12 so let's say it's 1227 that's close enough uh, I've already showed you live weather that's where I believe it's cloudy at the moment in New Zealand oh it's actually pretty nice down here I might leave live weather on yeah I'm gonna go live weather for the rest of the flight clear skies is what we find few clouds that's a uh, few scattered clouds here and there you will notice the turbulence as I change modes though, so that's scattered clouds. That's fairly realistic. That's pretty much where you get on a reasonable sunny day. And then next we've got scattered clouds, which is a lot more densely packed. Broken clouds. That's usually what you get when you fly around Europe, because <laughs> the weather here is crap. Uh, I've flown across Europe with light weather and this is generally what you get. And then we've got high level clouds, which are clouds, very few clouds, but they're very high up. Overcast. Uh, not great if you're doing a video and you want to show stuff to people. <laughs> We're just at the edge of the cloud lines here. Yeah, that's some pretty dense clouds. And next we've got rain, which is kind of hard to show off at high altitude, but it's pretty much what you would imagine. Snow, it's actually very nice at high altitude, but as you get down there you won't be able to see anything. But it does give you some interesting effects on the runway, so that's definitely worth trying. And it does, I don't know if I can see the floor at all here, let's try and see if I can see the floor, shall we? Yeah, over there. So it does actually chuck some uh, snow on the floor for you. And I've got a bit of a lag spike going. And finally we got Storm. Storm is a really cool weather effect. Let's go cockpit view for a sec, see if we can see some lightning. We might be too high for it. Oh, no, there was some. Sometimes it'll give you a bolt right in front of the windscreen. And it's really cool. It does look really awesome. Come on, give us a bolt. Nah, I've flown for about a minute in the storm now. It's given us some uh, thunder and lightning, but nothing in front of the windscreen. But yeah, thunder and lightning. That's oh, a really good effect. And let's go back to clear weather. Nice bit of turbulence. And we should... How far are we now? We are... Uh, about 120 miles away, so it won't give us any uh, indication to decrease altitude yet, but it won't be too long. So we've got a nice little mountain ridge here. Here's the bay. Don't know what town that is, but they've got a racehorse track. You can see that down below. Nice little racehorse track. But our place is really expensive to live in. Got some rivers. Nice little valley there, and then a valley on our left as well, with a nice big river running through it. Yeah, this is awesome. 100% guys, if you're on the fence about buying this game, just, just do it. Like as I said, I'm running this on a 2080 Super. I also ran it on my 1080 Ti, that worked great, but then they're both very high-end cards. I've seen it run on a 10, uh, 1050 Ti. You can't get the highest settings, but on medium settings with anti-aliasing turn off, you you should get a decent experience. You'll get some nice frame rate going. But yeah, if if you've got a high-end PC, even if you're not that much into Sims, as I said, this game's very easy to run. It's very easy to play. Just just get it, guys. You're gonna love the experience. Absolutely, it, it's still, I've been playing this for two weeks straight now, pretty much, and it is just, it still blows my mind. Like, I've got to take my hat off to Asobo. I'm pretty sure it was Asobo that did the graphics for this game. Like, it's such a monumental task. Yeah, can you create the planet for us? And they did it. They absolutely did it. They nailed it. I do have a few criticisms of this game. As I said, it is hard to run, but then what do you expect? 
Um, secondly, I wish there were more s options for skins. Like, I understand licensing issues, but the Premium Deluxe ed Edition was £110. For that much money, I would expect to throw some real airlines in that I recognise. Although that said, this pack that I got, hats off to the guy that made that, really is incredible. You get a lot of airline choices. Um, I believe it was only for the Airbus A320, the skins, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that other skin packs will be released, if not by now, then shortly. And you can make your planes look pretty freaking awesome. Check out that valley down there. That is... That's quite a river. And then over to the right, we've got some scattered clouds going on. The live weather? <laughs> it's, it's certainly good. It really is. I've, I live not far from Cardiff Airport. And I've flown out of Cardiff and over my house with live weather on. And... Yeah, it's it's pretty on spot. It's pretty bang on, that is. So, I would highly recommend using live weather. Um, the only time I really turn it off is I put clear skies or I want a good view. Or, sometimes you're just like, yeah, I, I don't want to land in a thunderstorm. If you're in a Cessna, I wouldn't put thunderstorms on because you're going to have a real hard time there. Um, but yeah, for an Airbus which has, in my opinion, the easiest to use controls, then yeah, go for it. Thunderstorms, snow, I love landing in the snow. That's, uh, that makes it really difficult. As I said, the visibility, I landed at Skipple this morning in snow, and I turned the depth all the way up, and yeah. I genuinely couldn't see the runway as I fl flew over the threshold. I just kind of sat there. I was in outside camera, just going, hmm. I hope the autopilot knows what it's doing, because <laughs> it really, if it didn't know it was hitting at someone's house. So, if you live near the airport, I'd probably be hitting your house. Okay guys, so I'm recording this uh, audio voiceover after I landed, and after I was editing the video. Um, unfortunately, at some point my audio just decided it didn't want to work anymore and my microphone stopped working for approximately 10 minutes um, so I will bring you back just before landing but unfortunately I did miss some of the flight uh, generally it was just some really nice rivers that I saw I might put a little highlight in of them as I fly over them and uh, it was the, el the air traffic controller telling us to decrease altitude uh, we did that in steps, so first we descended to 14,000 feet, then 6,000, then 2,000, and uh, went right up to the coast of New Zealand, and the airplane took a nice little right turn, and lined us up with the runway, and I was about to intersect the ILS, and that is where I'll bring you back, but as I said, I'm sorry about the audio, and I'll put some nice little highlights underneath this voiceover now. So at least you have something good to look at and you'll see some of the interesting stuff that I saw. So once again, I apologise for that. Now let's get back to the video. Right, I'm going to increase the flaps a bit more. A localizer is intersected. Oof. That felt like quite a drop then. It looked like it. Check out that river. That's really cool. And my frame rate's gone. Game's frozen. There we go. And landing clearance. Gear down. As I said earlier, my um, checklists are all done automatically and my radio comms are. I've got the AI to do that. My co-pilot's doing that. Ooh, this is not looking good for the frame rate. Right? Occasional stutter here and there, it's not good. Fair play, pilots can't see much when they sit back, can they? <laughs> Let's go to this cam for a little bit. Can I make out the pappy lights? I don't think I can yet, no. I assume this airport has pappy lights. Pretty sure it's required by law. 
1,000. Eight hundred feet. How well will the autopilot line us up? I think we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna pop that all the way in, not that it really matters now. I love the reflections on the ground. That's such a cool little detail. Five hundred feet. Let's see if I balls this landing up then. Oh, there's the Pappy lights there. Two white, two red. That's exactly what we should have. If you have four red, you're too low. If you have four white, you're too high. We're slightly off centre, but you know what? I can deal with that. 80, 60. I'm pulling back on the yoke a little bit now just to smooth it out. 15, 10. Pop back the throttle. Come on, touchdown. There we go. Autopilot disconnected. And full reverse thrust. I'm going to go reverse this until I hit about 50 miles, 50 knots. And press and wide, slow down. Can I turn down there or is that a runway? Um. That is a runway, I believe, but you know what? Screw it. That was a bit of a jank turn. Let's increase our speed a little bit. Even on the ground, this looks really good. Like, this isn't even one they handcrafted airports, this is just one it's auto-generated, pretty much. As far as I know it is, at least. But then, to be fair, pretty much all of them I visited look this good, so... Clearly something in their auto-generation program's working. Seven knots. I'm gonna go a bit faster on the throttle. going to increase our speed. Our speed limit uh, is 20 knots. There is a car coming right towards me. What are you doing, buddy? You might want to uh, move. You pleb. <laughs> well, either way, guys, this has been uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below, and uh, make sure you're subscribed as well. And, uh, <laughs> what is that van doing? If he sees me, why is he driving towards me? What an idiot. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, um, as I said, hit the like button. I'll make some more if, uh, if enough of you like it. I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.